Join one of our ministries at the Church Without Walls for personal growth, spiritual fulfillment, and community connection. Join us on May 5th for the Find Your Fit Ministry Fair after each service. Discover your perfect ministry fit here at the Church Without Walls. For additional information, visit findyourfit.tcww.org. Join us for our Spring Fest Community Health and Wellness Symposium. This is a fun and informative event for the whole family with basketball tournaments, rides, games, and food trucks. Get health, screenings, and free supplies. Donate blood or plasma. Explore nutrition, mental health, and fitness. Be a part of insightful sessions covering colorectal health, diabetes prevention, and advanced weight loss options. Participate in MD Anderson's Faith Families Aiming Towards Health, a six-month plan that helps families reach and sustain a healthy weight. Qualifying families get paid to lose weight. So bring your family and friends on Saturday, April 13th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Eldridge Campus for our Spring Fest Community Health and Wellness Symposium. For more information, please go to healthwellness.tcww.org. There's something about us that feel like we got to protect everybody else rather than stand up for the integrity and for the liberation of what God has called us to be. I can't tell you everything going to be all right. It, it, it may not turn out how you want it to turn out. It may actually get worse, but the thing is that I can't give you a word just to make you feel good, but my job is to give you a word that will fuel your faith. And that's the peculiar way of God, that God will bless you, but not the way you think God will bless you. That's not the cross he's talking about. No, he's talking about a cross that will cost you. Don't get it twisted, beloved. Salvation is free. But it costs to follow Jesus. I'm going to say it again. I said salvation is free. But it costs to follow Jesus. He did not change God. The cross did not change man. But the cross did change the relationship between God and man. But I'm here to tell you that God loves you so much. Let me say it one more time. That God loves you so much that he'll keep coming back.
lift him up. Yes. Can you help me lift him up? Yes, Lord. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times, all and time. his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The humble shall hear of it, and oh, Lord, they'll be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt yes, his Lord. name yes. together. Yes. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Praise be to God. Good evening, Church of Our Walls family. We are so glad to have you here worshiping with us tonight. It's always, again, as I say, a joy to see you here as we all come together growing and continuing in the Word of God. I, I, know, I know Jesus is pleased when he sees us here tonight, so you ought to be excited. Give yourself a hand. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. To our first-time friends and guests, we want to thank you for coming out tonight. We pray God's blessings on your life. We appreciate you coming out. Oh, Lord, if, if you have uh, any questions tonight or if you need anything tonight, you can get with one of our leaders, and we'll be more than glad to answer any questions you, that you might have. Other thing is, is that as the Word of God is going forth tonight and the Spirit of God is moved, if he moves on you, please, 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 Come and join our family. We'd love to have you Amen. to be a part of the Church Without Walls family. God bless you. God bless you. Again, church, we want you at this time to look to your neighbors on the left and your neighbors on the right and front behind you. Give yourself a good virtual hug. That's us hugging you. Amen. Amen. All right. Peace be unto you. Good evening. The Old Testament will be coming from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 4. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 to 4. Arise, shine, for your light has come, yes. and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the hip. New Testament is 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as through God we're making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteous of God. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, you are worthy to be praised. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again to save us from our sins and to make us new creations. We pray for peace around the world. We pray for an increase in God-fearing leaders across the political landscape and for individuals to take their voting opportunities seriously. Bless us now as we study your word. And may we truly be Christ's ambassadors, sharing God's love with others. Thank you for the continued protection and for blessing upon Pastor Ralph Douglas West, Sister Sharita West, and their family. We also pray for our leadership 
staff, congregation, and first-time friends. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. We come to worship the Lord tonight. If you don't mind, can't you just lift up your hands and say, Lord, you are good. Come on, talk to him. Out of the understanding of your relationship, say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are merciful. You are faithful. There is none like him in all the world. Come on, talk to him. Just open up your mouth and begin to bless him, church. That's what we come to do tonight. Hallelujah. This is my testimony. I can say, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't thank you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. You've been so and tell them, church, come on. Lord, you are You've good. been better, Lord. You've been better than I can't praise you. I can't praise you. Come on, say, I owe you my life. I owe you my life. I can't thank you enough, Jesus. Even if I try. Even if I try. Hey, come on, tell them, say it's so good. Anybody in this room? So many doors you've opened, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me. Come on, can we testify in this room? Come on, say so many doors, so many doors, so many ways, so many ways you made, so many times, so many times you healed. Come on, somebody lift up your hands and we open any doors. Say so many. So many times, so many times you've been better than good to me. So many doors, so many doors, so many ways, so many times you keep on blessing me over and over and over. So many doors, so many doors. Better than good 
good to me. I can say you've been so good, Lord, you've been so good, you've been, that's it, so good to me. Somebody praise them, church. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. God a hand clap of praise tonight. If you would, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Lord our God, we say thank you. You've been so good to us. We can never express the brevity and volume of our gratitude in a thousand lifetimes. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to worship. We pray right now as we come together as a believing body and community that you would make our minds and spirits receptive to your Holy Spirit as you speak to our hearts through your word, addressing unknown needs of each brother and sister in the pew and in the pulpit. We do this as we come together, we lift up your holy name, and we come together to give you all the glory and praise. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. <clears throat> if you were here Sunday, uh, you will you'll already be somewhat familiar with the character that we're going to lift up tonight in our study. Open your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 20. <clears throat> As we continue on uh, on the road from the resurrection. The Gospel of John, chapter 20. I'm going to read verse 25. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. This is the word of God. You may be seated. <clears throat> the reality of knowing the risen Savior. Um, the preaching team and the church staff has received all of your emails and your threatening text messages. As you see, we have a printout again tonight. Uh, and then let me say it again. You all just won't let the preacher relax. You're just going to continue to give me homework. You have your outlines. I hope you all are happy. <laughs> Several of the disciples are very well known. Uh, we know Peter, James, John. It's almost like their names go together if you're familiar in scripture, but you know, you know, Peter, James, John, the A team, the close group uh, with, uh, of disciples that are with Jesus. But, um, but um, books have been written about those three, but we don't know a whole lot about Thomas. And tonight we want to look at the disciple named Thomas. We know next to nothing of his early life, uh, nor his calling. We do know he's a fisherman, and the mere fact that he is fishing with Peter and the other disciples, we also know him as Thomas Didymus, known as the twin. Apparently, he might have a twin brother or a twin sister, and some scholars uh, even believe that, you know, Matthew might have been his twin brother. We just don't know. 
Even though we don't know a lot about him that is documented in Scripture and the Gospels, as a matter of fact, um, he, you know, he's, he's not mentioned much, but five times he's mentioned in the Gospel of John. But what's not written about him, quite frankly, all of us in here know him or in some ways are like him. <laughs> okay, for over 2,000 years, Thomas has really gotten a really bad reputation. He is given the name, all right, here's your first fill-in-the-blank answer, Doubting Thomas. He's, getting the, he's given the name Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas. As what we look at the Bible says about him, I want you to see that he possesses some admirable, admirable qualities. There are some qualities that are admirable. You're like, wait a minute. His name is Doubting Thomas. You know, what's admirable about that? Just stay with me for a minute. One, he's loyal to the Lord. He loves Jesus. He really does. He's loyal to the Lord, and he loves Jesus. He also has an inquiring spirit. Now, I can appreciate that. You know, his love, his loyalty, he's inquisitive. He has an inquiring spirit. And yes, here's another one to fill in the blank. He is skeptical. But his skepticism is based on reality. He's skeptical, but it's based on reality. See, I told you all, we don't have a lot written about Thomas, but many of us can relate to him better than we think. Because some people in here right now are watching you. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I have faith. Y'all know faith is a substance, things hope for, but I just have some skeptic. I'm a little, you know, skeptical. Confession is good for the soul, bad for the reputation. Me, I can be a little cynical sometimes. I can be, you know. I know y'all going to judge me later, but oh well. Uh, I know you all are good and saved Christians don't struggle with that. But sometimes I can get like that. I can be a little cynical, okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But I appreciate this about Thomas because those personality traits I can relate to. Because if some stuff just doesn't make, my, make sense to my mind, it's hard for me to go along with, you know. Look at this. Next blank. Belief can be difficult when it doesn't make sense or, or seen with eyes. Um, <clears throat> some things just doesn't add up. But, I mean, that's the beauty and the mystery of God. i give you a mystery that every one of us in this room have accepted but have encountered. My first encounter with cold weather, I'm a Texas boy. I'm just used to the heat. The first time I saw snow was in Atlanta, Georgia. And the snow fell. I saw these ice things. It was called snow. Uh, falling from the sky, I thought the world was going in. I did. I was passing out. And my roommates, sweet mates from New York and Chicago were just having too much fun laughing at my expense. It was cold. And I did something. Didn't even think about it. I grabbed my hands and <laughs> blew in my hands. Now, somehow, some way, when I <laughs> blew in my hands, it was Warm air. But then, going in the lunch cafeteria, we had some hot soup. Same person. I blew on it. It was cool. I can't tell you for the life of me how I did that. <laughs> I don't know how I did it. But it was a mystery <laughs> from the same God. He presents to you and I every day mysteries. Some things just don't make sense. Some things we can't put it together. But that's where faith and trust in the Creator comes in. Lord, when stuff doesn't make sense to my eyes, make sense to my mind, I trust you. I'm trying not, I'm trying not to chase rabbits. You know, I don't have a lot of scriptures for you all to read. So this is where that Baptist preacher in me kick in while I stop hearing all 
because I think about when Job, if you really want to have fun and to relate to a character, read the whole book of Job. Not just the first two chapters and not just the end. Read the whole thing. Job went on this rant where he felt like he can question God. He felt like, you know, God, you need to give account for me losing my, my children, losing my health, losing my money. God, you need to account for this. And the Lord said, all right, Job, you stand there like a man. <laughs> And he says, where were you when I outlined the land and filled the earth with the seas? See, I was done with that first question. I'm like, oh, and, and the Lord laid out all these questions. And all Job would say, well, you know, Lord. All I'm saying is there are certain things in this life that we may not be able to put the ABCs together. It may not make sense. But as long as we trust the, great, the creator, we're in good hands. Thomas, he was skeptical, but it was based on reality. And truth is, belief can be difficult when it doesn't make sense to us. In looking at the life of Thomas, how you and I can come to the reality of knowing the risen, of Jesus, the, the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at this. It begins with, number one, the recognition and responsibility for him. The recognition and responsibility for him. When we look at verse 24, it says, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. Now I know all of you, you read that, it just jumps off the page. Like, wait a minute. Why Thomas, why wasn't he with the disciples? Well, in John 13, Jesus demonstrates what true servanthood looks like. John 13, Jesus is washing the feet. And even the one who would betray him, he's even washing Judas's feet. I'm going to come all the way around in a second. Jesus gives this new command in verse 34, 35 in chapter 13. Qualification, qualifications of a disciple, and that's love. Peter speaks up and simply asks Jesus in John 13, verse 36, Lord, where are you going? Jesus responds, you cannot go where I'm going. In fact, you will deny me. Now, guess who is witnessing this? Thomas. Then we come to chapter 14. Then Jesus gives the comforting word that if you've ever been to a funeral, you have heard it over and over and over and over and over again. Let your, not your hearts be troubled. But that same chapter, he gives these covenant words. Look what Thomas recites in John 14, 5. He says this, Lord, we don't know where you're going. Jesus explains to Thomas and all the disciples, the beautiful verse, John 14, verse 6, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Back to John 20, verses 19 and 23. Thomas is not with the disciples when Jesus appears. He wasn't with the disciples on the first Easter Sunday morning. Let me say it this way. Thomas, the apostle, is in heaven right now. And he has been walking around heaven and said, yes, I miss the first resurrection service. The first one ever. <laughs> now, but why did he miss it? Well, you got to keep in mind, if you hear Sunday, I mentioned this. Thomas saw, uh, Thomas saw his loved one die. We say that rather casually and miss it. Um, if you've ever seen a loved one transition, that's a, that's a scarring thought. Uh, uh, confession, good for the soul. I, I'll never forget this, why Easter's so near and dear to me. I forgot to give you all my Easter joke that I give every year. Um, and this was Easter 1988. I remember it. Uh, 
I told my mom and dad, I said, hey, I, I can't go to school today. They were on the way to school. They were like, why not? I can't go to school. Why not? Jesus got out the grave yesterday. I ain't got over that yet. <laughs> so they let me stay home. This is Easter 1988. Excuse me, 89. Well, on that day, that Monday, my, I, I was fortunate enough to grow up across the street from my grandparents. You know, literally, you can throw a rock across the street at my grandparents' house. Well, I was helping my grandfather, my, uh, grand, my papa, Edward Earl Grays. I was helping him. Well, I wasn't helping him. He was carrying some boxes across the street. I'm five years old. I ain't carrying nothing. But I was on my big bird, big wheel. I was on his side. While he's walking, I'm riding my big wheel. Well, I drove my big wheel a little bit in front of him, and I turned around. I saw the boxes in the air, and my grandfather was on the ground. I ran into the house and grabbed my doctor kit. My mother was like, why are you running in the house? I said, I got to get my doctor kit. Papa's on the ground. And I went outside. My grandfather, having a heart attack, I didn't know it had my doctor's kit, had it on his chest, and I'll never forget the scream in my mind to this day at 40 years old when my mother came outside and saw her dad on the ground. At that moment, I realized that there are certain traumatic events that will be tattooed in your mind. Like Thomas, what he witnessed was far more gruesome than that. And so before we're so quickly to demonize him for not being at the first church service, Resurrected Sunday, he just saw his beloved Lord and friend being publicly humiliated and body literally ripped to shreds. So Thomas, he ran away. And like most people, when traumatic events happen, he wanted to go in isolation. He ran away. Now, yes, he missed the first service, but before we get into that, we have to, all, we have to keep in mind what happened to him. We, what happened to him on, on that, that weekend? He saw Jesus dying on the cross, murdered, bloody, naked, humiliated, and he was a follower of that man who was publicly shamed. So Thomas runs away. He's running away in fear, possibly because of the Jews doing the same thing to him, running away because he's heartbroken. They put their hope in Jesus. They believed he was going to be everything, and they saw that everything literally be crucified. He ran away. Now, as we look at that in John 20, Jesus shows up to the disciples, and Thomas isn't there. But we know why. <laughs> Not, we don't want to rush to demonize him, but he, he was gone. But when he was missing out, what he missed out on, I appreciate John, the author, recording it because it gives us some things to remind us, some things that you get in the Christian fellowship that you can't get nowhere else. Let's look at it. Jesus shows up in verse 19. Thomas missed out on the presence of the Lord. Jesus showed up in the room where they were. He missed out on the peace of the Lord. First sermon Jesus gives on Resurrection Sunday, peace be unto you. That was a necessary word because it says that they had a lot of fear. They were anxious. They had anxiety. They were worried. And that's the one thing we all need when we're anxious and we're worried is peace. Then Jesus, then at this time, they praise the Lord. He shows up, they're praising. It says that they were overjoyed. Now, here's the beauty of it. You can buy happiness, but you can't put a price tag on joy. You can buy happiness, but it'll run out. But it's a whole nother thing when you have joy and the joy that Jesus gives the world can't give, but also the world can't take it away. If you want to have fun and really learning about joy, I, I maybe I'm, I'm praying about it if we'll walk through the book of Philippians. That is the theme of the book of Philippians. Paul is in jail, 
but he still has joy in our Lord. But my professor, Dr. Todd Steele, who's a Pauline scholar, uh, he describes in the book of Philippians for the joy for Paul is his joy is the flag that is raised in the castle when the king comes home. <laughs> but that's what joy is in the person, in the presence of Jesus Christ. Thomas missed out on that on the first service. He missed out on the promotions of the Lord, and he missed out on the provisions of the Lord. Thomas is a picture, uh, is a picture of what you miss when you fail to come to church. Now, church attendance is not an optional matter. It is, here it is, the next blank, a command. It is a command. You know I wasn't going to do this. Somebody got your Bible. Open your Bible, somebody. I knew y'all were getting excited like I'm going, he's going on preaching. We don't have to teach the lesson tonight. I'm a man of my word. Y'all are going to help me with this lesson. Somebody open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. I know you already know it, but read it for me. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews 10, 25 says, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. We don't miss the time where we gather together. It is a command, an expectation. Another one, another blank. One can miss an opportunity that will never present itself again. Now, in John 20, it was the first resurrection service. That was special for that moment in time. But you never know what you might miss when you are in the fellowship of the believers. And let me tell you something. It's priceless. Those of us who are in here right now, you know it's priceless. How do I know? Because I'm willing to bet there's been a time where you've come to church and somebody just told you, I'm praying for you. They may not even pray for you right then, but that was just the extra oomph you needed. Or somebody just encouraged you. It's good to see you. Or they asked, how are you doing? How's your mother? How's your father? Or it might have been a sermon. It might have been one line that just changed your whole trajectory of thought process. You never know what you will receive when you are in the fellowship of other believers. Because also, keep in mind, when Thomas <clears throat> wasn't there that day, Jesus it's, it's actually it shows us two weeks. The first week when Thomas wasn't there, the next week Thomas was. The first week, Jesus says, peace be unto you. And then he said, forgive others. But then he shows up again the next week, peace be unto you. Thomas, stop doubting. Now, the first time he shows up, he's speaking to everybody. But then the second time he shows up, he's speaking to everybody, but then zeroes in on Thomas. And what that says to us is that God's word can speak to all of us and someone at the same time. You might be here in the, in the lesson for the week or the sermon could be on family. But then from that word, from the word of God, somebody speak to you and helping you being more responsible in your finances. I mean, it's just how God's word works. He can speak to everybody and somebody at the same time. Now, you need the church and what it offers. And when you come to church to worship, you are proclaiming your faith of the risen Lord. Secondly, look at this. We come to the reality of knowing the risen Savior by moving from my response to his reserves. For my response to his reserves. Remember, Thomas isn't there when Jesus appears to the disciples, but the other disciples' message, we have seen him. We have seen the Lord. This is in the active voice. In other words, they keep on telling Thomas. They keep on witnessing to him. And I appreciate this because they're not trying to guilt Thomas into coming to church. They're just saying, hey, We've seen the Lord. This is what the Lord has done for us, the peace he gave us. He gave us joy. 
I really, really appreciate that because some of us, none of y'all in here, maybe them over at Queenston, uh, try to guilt people into coming to church. And you know what I mean by guilt tripping? You want to use the Bible? Well, you know, if you was in church, you wouldn't be going through all the hell you're going through. And people be doing that. <laughs> you know what? If you come to church, you, you, just, you just might can find you a husband. <laughs> See, see, I knew, you know what? I knew if I kept going, I was going to, I, I, y'all ain't said amen like that all night. <laughs> Let me move on. I appreciate it. They said we have seen the Lord. They did not try to guilt trip Thomas into coming to church. Now, before we come down too hard on, we need to think about the other disciples. When they first heard the news that Jesus was alive, they didn't believe either. Now, in Luke 24, on the road of Emmaus, there's Cleopas on the road and another unnamed disciple. They didn't quite believe. The only reason the ten believed was because they had seen Jesus for themselves with their eyes. Thomas was only asking for the same proof that they had. That's all. He was asking for the same thing. There are people in this room who can identify with Thomas. I told you, we may not have a lot of background with him, but we can feel that too. You've heard time and time what you cannot see with your eyes. And sometimes you're like, well, I want to see some of this, you know, I want to see some of these miracles too, you know. What the Bible says about him is hard for the human mind to grasp. But look to Jesus and believe the testimony of of his word. Believe the testimony of his word because in verse 29, Jesus was saying, he, gave, he gives another beatitude, blessed are those who believe me and don't see. That's us. Now, I'm not going to get anybody business of your age, but I'll tell you this, I'm not 2,000 years old and I've never seen the Lord. <laughs> But his word says, hey, those who are in 7500 Queenston Boulevard 2,000 years later, if you believe in my word, you will be blessed. I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. Yes, All right. Church, the spirit of God convinces us of the truth. We, like the ten disciples, believed and were saved and were filled with peace, joy, and the spiritual life. Finally, we discover the reality of the risen Savior. Number three, clear revelation and being rewarded because of him. Clear revelation and rewarded because of him. Perhaps the disciples begged and pleaded with Thomas to the point where he decided to meet with them next Sunday. See, this would happen. This happened in the middle of the week. They begged. Maybe he's like, all right, fine. I'm going to come with you next Sunday. Kind of might be the blueprint for all of us because this year we are being challenged to grow. Instead of us trying to get people to church, our family, our friends, co-workers, no need to guilt tripping them. Just let them know what the Lord has done for you in your life. And what he's done is priceless. You can't get it in the country club. can't give a fraternity, even though the greatest fraternity on the planet, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I cannot get... <laughs> Shameless plug. Uh, you cannot get the, the same fellowship that you get when you come a part of the body of Christ in the church. That might be a blueprint for us. Maybe, just maybe. This time, Thomas focuses his attention, Jesus focuses his attention on Thomas. He repeats the very same thing, very words to Thomas, back to him. This time, now, you know, it almost sounds like Jesus being sarcastic. He invites him to touch him, touch him to satisfy him, you know, you know, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe unless I touch him. Jesus said, here my hands, my scars touch me. But the text says he never really touched him. He just saw and believed. 
Jesus tells him, here it is, to let go of his doubts and trust what he knows to be true. Let go of his doubts and trust what he knows to be true. Now, there's a difference between doubt and unbelief. You see, doubt is a problem of intellect. I don't have a problem with that. If it's an intellectual issue, possibly we can just guide you toward the information. You do the responsible thing and research it for yourself. But then unbelief is a problem of the heart. Unbelief is a problem of the heart. Unbelief will not believe no matter what it sees. No matter what you say, I, hey, I've already made up my mind, I'm not going to believe. But Thomas receives what other disciples have been looking for all week. Clear revelation of who Jesus is. The reward is fellowship with him. The reward is fellowship. In verses 19 through 23, he gets all the things that they got back in verses 19 and 23. Apparently, Thomas never doubted again. After Pentecost, the Bible never mentions him again. But if you go into India, um, Thomas, this same Thomas, went to go witness into the continent of India. And there is right now a statue uh, of Thomas, the disciple. Uh, that's really important because, you know, in India, the prominent religion is Hinduism. And they have a belief, <clears throat> clear my throat, a belief in 333 million deities. And Thomas went to a place of great doubt. But the good news is God can take you just like Thomas and transform your life. The story of Thomas reminds us that he is able. The Lord is able. Able to do what? He's able to use you. He's able to bless you. He's able to keep you. He's able to amaze you. All you have to do is believe, trust, and obey. Amen. 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 For a few moments, we want to open up the doors of the church. Maybe you're here and watching, possibly. You're just like Thomas. You know, I've heard of Jesus, but I don't know him, and I just doubt that whatever you've been saying can't possibly be true. Well, this invitation is given to you the same way that the lesson ended. Put away your doubt. Trust and believe. The proverb of Psalmist says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. In other words, you don't have to take my word for it. Try them for yourself. Second invitation, maybe you strayed away from the faith. This is an invitation to come back to the Lord. Third invitation, maybe you don't have a church home. And you have a long list of reasons why you're not a part of the church. You already know if it's right to be in the church, it's wrong to be out of the church. So our leaders are going to sing and our leaders are standing. If that's you, get up from your seat, walk down the aisle, because the Lord is waiting on you right now. This is the day. Let's give God a hand clap of praise.
And let us now prepare to worship the Lord through our thanksgiving because God loves a what a, a cheerful giver. If you're here Sunday, uh, I may mention to you, I know you might see the IC3 uh, envelopes. I want to encourage you to please, if you can't be a part of the conference, I, I challenge the uh, entire IC3 board saying that the Eldridge campus, we're going to send 30 pastors uh, to the conference. So whatever you have, whatever your contribution, I ask that you would help us in that endeavor because as we are being challenged to grow, we not we don't want to just grow numerically. We're growing in our Bible study, growing our Sunday services, we're growing in our spirit, but also growing in our missions because I have a wonderful treat after I see three for you because I want you all to see how what you have done has not only helped the conference, but helped other pastors in different cities, but also touched a whole nother continent in South Africa, amen? It's all right, you have your gifts. If you don't have the envelope, you can go to the church site when we text. Just text IC, uh, Eldridge IC3, and you can give on that platform, amen? All right, come on, let's wave our offers in the air, our devices, if that might be the such case. Let's say it together. Where there's a temple, there's a need. Where there's a need, there's provision. Where there's provision, there is God. And where there is God, he'll supply in miraculous ways. It's offering time. It's that time of year again. Yes, it's the Ralph Douglas West 23rd Annual Golf Classic. Join us April 22nd at noon for a shotgun start. Be a part of this memorable experience on the green while also raising money to benefit the Brook Hollow Christian Academy. Visit tcww.org slash golf to register or for additional information. Greeting motorsport community, foodies, family, friend. Greetings to all. This year, we're thrilled to host our annual cookout and chrome event here at our Queenston campus on April 20th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Join us for delicious food, fun, fellowship, and an exciting car show. Remember to register today at tcww.org or you can scan the QR code. You know the rest. Don't meet me there. Beat me there. Can you see us? Great. Well, well, we, we would, would love, love to see you in our volunteer ministry, worship and arts ministry, pastoral care and first touch ministries. Join one of our ministries at the Church Without Walls for personal growth, spiritual fulfillment, and community connection. Join us on May 5th for the Find Your Fit Ministry Fair after each service. Discover your perfect ministry fit here at the Church Without Walls. For additional information, visit findyourfit.tcww.org. Join us for our Spring Fest Community Health and Wellness Symposium. This is a fun and informative event for the whole family with basketball tournaments, rides, games, and food trucks. Get health, screenings, and free supplies. Donate blood or plasma. Explore nutrition, mental health, and fitness. Be a part of insightful sessions covering colorectal health, diabetes prevention, and advanced weight loss options. Participate in MD Anderson's Faith, Families Aiming Towards Health, a six-month plan that helps families reach and sustain a healthy weight. Qualifying families get paid to lose weight. So bring your family and friends on Saturday, April 13th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Eldridge Campus for our Spring Fest Community Health and Wellness Symposium. For more information, please go to healthwellness.tcww.org. Hi, I'm Pastor Ralph Douglas West. Here's an invitation for you to join me in Houston, Texas, April the 23rd to the 25th for the IC3 Church Conference. The IC3 Church Conference is your opportunity to connect, learn, and grow with fellow pastors and leaders from around the nation. This year, our theme is Strengthening What Remains, and we've designed an incredible lineup of breakout sessions to empower your staff and ministry leaders. Taking ownership of your membership, 
using AI and church, handling conflict constructively, reimagining Christian education, grant resources 101, thriving in the digital age. The IC3 Church Conference is where inspiration meets innovation and where we come together to strengthen what remains. Don't miss out on this incredible chance to transform your church and community. Join us in Houston, Texas from April the 23rd to the 25th. Register today at IC3ChurchConference.org. Amen. All right, church family, let us stand together. As you can see, this 756, I'm a man of my word, yet got y'all out of here before 8 o'clock. Y'all didn't think I was going to be able to pull it off tonight, did you? <laughs> well, look, I'm looking forward to seeing you all uh, this weekend. In the book of Norm Numbers chapter 6, the Lord told Moses, Moses tell Aaron, this is how you ought to bless the children. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and grant you his peace. When you rise up early and set a lake, in your labor, in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until that day when we shall stand at the feet of Jesus where there's no sunrise or sunset. God bless you. Be encouraged. <laughs>